good evening everyone and welcome to the 27th session of the aim prime program today is a very interesting session which is around project planning and management and we have with us mr ravi sarangpani you already know about ravi he is a which is a company and he is a medical advice consultant with over 25 years experience in various roles ravi has been doing this workshop with uh, in our startup ecosystem and we are thankful ravi for joining us today welcome and over to you yeah thank you very much mukta and uh, good evening once again to all of you so let's get started right and off we go to talk about project management so once again good evening everybody uh we're trying to cover a lot of ground today within a short time so i'm going to request all of you to stay sharp uh, uh if you uh, i i i am assuming that all of you have downloaded the software the project ebay software from the link that was provided to you a couple of days back so if you have done that already uh, then please you, you can actually have that software open on your on your computers or your laptop or whatever it is that you're using uh, you'll need a computer or a laptop or a full screen device okay it's not going to be possible to do it on a phone or a tab so uh, please have it open and ready so that we can when we do the exercises we can be uh, you know we can try and do it quickly what we are going to cover today is i'm going to tell you a little bit about why project management is important and uh, what it can do for for each and every one of you we'll talk about the heart of project management which is the gantt chart and how it handles what are called dependencies okay which is really the crux of uh, this whole story okay dependencies is where everything begins and ends we'll then have a short break for questions after which we'll jump straight into the exercises so the exercises are going to be i will demonstrate a uh, uh, two three different aspects of getting you started with the software uh it's not actually there's there's really no big rocket science to this kind of software it's it's very very spreadsheet like and it's like how we all learn to use uh, excel okay uh some small intricacies here and there which is what i'm going to be showing you through these exercises and then you're going to have short breaks of between 7 to 10 minutes each for each of you to actually do it yourself uh so that you get the feel for handling this software and how you can take your real life situation and create a project based on this we'll then speak about uh, certain concepts like baselines and how do you update things as you go along as you go live uh tracking your progress in the project and most importantly we will understand the implications of delay okay uh once we do that i'll introduce you to a small concept this is not going to be very essential but it's it's just a helpful tool uh, in organizing your uh, sequence of activities it's called the wbs or the work breakdown structure we will speak a little bit about that uh, before before we conclude i'll speak to you about the importance of project monitoring and project management and what you need to do to make sure that all the hard work and effort you put into creating a plan uh, it is really going to be uh, it's, it's really going to pay off when you monitor well okay and that's what we'll speak about and then we'll have some question answer session and close so does this sound familiar okay this is a nice <laughs> comic strip is your project in good shape yes it is we started 5 years ago and no one has stopped us yet okay <laughs> projects going on and on and on and uh, this is this is an interesting <laughs> joke about projects right now a typical i took medtech because we have quite a few medtech uh, uh participants here but this it's not true that it is only for medtech medtech has something extra beyond what uh, product development needs to do and that's why it's still more elaborate and so it's a nice example to show the complexity so product development involves a lot of things market requirements understanding product requirements documenting those user needs design inputs uh then developing a plan as to how all of this will be executed creating a preliminary design specification now these steps are by no means restricted to med tech okay all of you will be doing something like this and then the detailed product development aspect so
So, uh, Ravi, we lost you there. You've gone on mute. Then a design. Ravi, yeah. one yeah, yeah. Uh, short, brief, first couple of sentences. I think you went on mute. Yeah. Uh, can you hear me now? Yeah. I was having an incoming call, which I disconnected. So it, we just thought about a second there. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Fine. Thanks. So detailed design spec, engineering prototype, prototyping would involve multiple iterations before you get it right. Then a design freeze. Then you have verification, validation. This is the med tech part. Very important. Verification, validation. Doesn't mean only med tech does it. All, uh, all of you will be doing some elements of verification and validation before you transfer to production. And again, medtech specific is clinical, regulatory, uh, creating a device master file, getting clinic reg reg regulatory approval, and all of this to be done before uh, it can be finally commercialized. So it's a long and fairly elaborate sequence of things that need to be done uh, and need to be completed, ideally on time and to a schedule to make sure that a product finally gets out of the door. Now let's come back to you guys as founders, uh, co-founders, promoters, startups. How do you typically spend your time? So if you look at uh, just a sample, random sample of activities, you know, you prepare pitch decks, you're doing hiring interviews, you look after payroll of the people you have, you're doing grant and funding submissions, you're hunting for office space, you do meetings with users who are helping you in the design or you know, giving you inputs. You do design meetings with your team. Someday you may be writing a validation protocol or a verification test method. You meet with ISO consultants. You're meeting with a legal advisor because you need an NDA. You're meeting with vendors who are going to supply you prototypes or parts. You know, someday you're identifying testing labs. Uh, another day you may be preparing a cash flow projection and uh, you may be working on some compliances. This is just a sample, okay? I know I've not captured even a fraction of everything that you need to do. But if you look at this wide variety of activities which you guys as founders need to engage in, it, it, it frankly uh, amazes me the kind of capability many of you have. Because what you're doing is you're handling a whole host of specialized functions by yourself uh, at various points of time. So some of these are activities pertaining to finance, some of these pertain to HR, a uh, number of these are purchase, some of them are marketing, some of them are R&D, some of them are quality, and some of them are legal. So you're wearing so many different hats and handling so many different functions at various points of time in your journey. And uh, really, if, if uh, some of you or many of you find yourself in a situation that looks like this picture on the right, I wouldn't be surprised. Uh, I've had some experience now consulting with a number of uh, startups. And quite frequently, I find that, you know, uh, pre-agreed meeting times get moved or changed. And there are some very typical reasons that I hear frequently. It doesn't matter who I am consulting with, but these reasons are fairly typical. We have a grant submission due. We are expecting an investor meeting or a group of investors have suddenly preponed their meeting, so we have to meet them today. I have to update the pitch deck and so on. So these are typical reasons that we hear. But here is one reason I have never heard till date. We have to complete a critical path activity because if we don't do this today, it will delay the project four months from now. Okay? This is a reason which I have never heard till today. <clears throat> and again, what I am describing here is fairly typical. Uh, standard mode in which many of us operate is on a daily basis, we have a great number of things to attend to. And we all have different systems of organizing ourselves. Some of us have it on a notepad, a diary, some of us have it on an Excel file or whatever. But this is the typical mode, a list of things to be done. But when it comes to a project plan, what most of us do is typically create an Excel file. And more often than not, this Excel file is created for grant submissions. And the main element of this Excel file is it contains dates of key milestones. So let's say complete proof of concept three months from now. And then first prototype five months from now. And uh, design freeze eight months from now. So key milestone deliverable dates is what we typically put. And then we color those cells in Excel to show the timeline, and that's what we have. 
that's what is submitted and uh, and uh, i don't know how many of you actually go back and see that but i also know for a fact that the number of you go back and look at it only uh, probably 4 5 months later when it's time for the next review meeting and usually this these milestones are not broken down into component tasks because a milestone is a milestone a milestone is an end point okay proof of concept you have to get there you have to complete the activity of proof of concept but getting there from now 3 months later what are all the things that we need to do it's all in the head okay we have it we sort of have it in the head and many of us think that that's enough right and we don't really break it down into 1 2 3 4 5 8 15 20 26 things to be done by eight different people to finally reach this milestone that's usually not done however that's not how work happens how work actually happens is task by task or activity by activity by activity one after the other performed by individual people and that is what is represented by those by the text that you see on top of the man's head on the left those are tasks those are not milestones okay and there has to be a connectivity between individual task of today and milestone of two months later and somehow that connectivity doesn't exist when we create a milestone based plan and don't pay attention to the tasks which will help us to get there and typically when we have the tasks in our planner our diary our uh, our excel file our word document whatever the general objective is for each of these things try to get it done as fast as we can okay because this is there's usually no connectivity uh, how many of us actually say no put this off you know we don't need to do this now that that's rare because everything that is on the plate appears to be urgent now the other thing that typically happens is many of the tasks don't always meet target dates and i am sure <laughs> some of you would be smiling here that more often than not things don't happen when they should and of course okay so these are they they do happen when they should but the more frequent experiences things don't happen when they should a vendor doesn't deliver something that he was supposed to or one of the team members said i'll finish this tomorrow but it actually didn't finish tomorrow because something else came up and that's a usual situation and always there's a very valid sounding reason why something didn't happen for each target that is missed and the insidious thing is over a period of time we get used to these dates being missed it sort of becomes a default condition and we live with it kare delay to hona hi right that's the kind of situation we are aware are in and usually through all of this story going on we are usually not aware about a delay in a small activity today or tomorrow or day after tomorrow and what is the impact on the overall timeline what is the impact on the milestone date okay this connectivity is usually absent the result of all this is we find many times we are firefighting and reacting to situations uh many times we feel we are not really in control of our time events are driving us instead of we driving events some of us may feel swamped with a feeling that everything seems to be urgent don't know what to do and how to prioritize this is always a question we find ourselves many times rushing from deadline to deadline and worried and stressed about missing important activities so in all this situation what is it that project management i will go forward and say not can do for you will do for you the first thing that project management or the uh, uh the managing of activities in the form of a project the first thing it does is it brings visibility to everything you need to do and the timelines it surfaces what is called the critical path and i am going to spend more time on this so i'll skip this here many of some of you may already have heard of this so you may know what it is it will provide you with a definitive end date for each of the milestones that you want based on an understanding of what all needs to be done to reach that milestone and it will provide you with a definitive end date if you want and if you are detailed enough for when you can actually launch 
a product into the market. It lets you see at a glance how all your resources are utilized and who is maybe overloaded and who is underloaded. It supports the elimination of firefighting and it supports the, the creation of better planning and better management of your time and resources. It brings control for all members in the team. It removes chaos and it will definitely de-stress each member of the team, including you. So when do you need project management? Okay, and this is an attempt I have made to explain when you need it. But if you really understand this, you'll understand that practically any situation, because any endeavor which has an outcome based on achieving a targeted result within a targeted timeline, I have to reach here by this time, right? This practically describes everything that we do, right? If we want to do it in a targeted basis, which means project management is useful almost universally. Where the targeted result requires a series of activities or tasks to be completed. Now, this is universal too, okay? You will rarely ever get to any point without doing a series of things to get there. Where the activities or tasks need to be completed by multiple individuals, right? Not always the case, but frequently the case. Now, most importantly, where activities may be interlinked in one or more ways. Now, we don't really think so much about this, but if you, if you reflect on it now, as I'm talking to you, you'll understand that there are many things that cannot start till something is finished. If you are making an assembly of eight different parts, an outer casing and some internal components and a PCB and some display, LCD display panel and so on. And everything is coming from vendors. Can you start the assembly till all the parts have come? You cannot, right? So B cannot start till A is complete. And in this case, B, uh, B cannot start till probably A1, A2, A3, A4, AN is completed. Or B, C and D need to be completed for E to begin. Which is, which is another way of describing the same thing. This connectivity between something needs to be finished for something else to start is called the dependency. And dependency is the devil that really messes things up. And one of the things you must realize is when you are de defining your milestone dates with a broad understanding that I think in about three months we can do this, and you have a general idea in your head that we have to do one, two, three, four, five, six to get there. What frequently gets missed, and we are not very alive to this, is the devil of dependencies, where you cannot start something till something is finished. And, and, and then the next one cannot be started till B is finished. And delay in any one of these, what is the cascading effect of delay in these dependencies? And we're going to see more about that as we go along. So here is an example of a list of A, B, C, D, E, F, G, H, eight different tasks that need to be done, each of which is going to take a few days time. And it all looks like five days, three days, seven days, four days, and so on. But this doesn't have any dependencies factored in, okay? It doesn't really establish any connectivity and the sequence in which they need to be done because one is dependent on the other. What happens? when you factor dependencies. Okay, is this clear now? When you factor dependencies, and remember, I'm uh, the way I've uh, illustrated this example is you don't have everything dependent, but you have C cannot start till A is finished, and D cannot start till C is finished, F cannot start till D is finished, and H cannot start till F is finished. Now, those are the dependencies, and you have B and uh, E and G, which are not dependent on anything. They can start any time. The instant you factor these dependencies, what happens? Your schedule has expanded to 42 days, right? And this is not easily visible and comprehensible when you keep things in your head and put in a milestone date, okay? This needs to be planned for, this needs to be defined. And that is one of the most important elements of using project management, uh, using a project management system. And what you're seeing, this graphic that you're seeing on the screen comes, it's called a Gantt chart, okay? And this is what uh, is very easily created and creatable 
by using what is called a PMIS or a project management information system, which is a big sounding word for some nice, very nifty software, which helps you to do these things. So that's the heart of project management. It's called the Gantt chart. Okay. This was originally devised by a Polish engineer in, in around about 1890 or so, a guy called Karel Adamiecki. And this was then refined and modified by who else? An American engineer 15 years later. And obviously, it's his name that got appended to this, to this methodology. It's, it became to be known as a Gantt chart because he's the guy who modified it, refined it, and made it popular. And this is now 1905 to 2021, 116 years later, it continues to be the most common tool to plan and manage projects. And really speaking, nothing has changed from 1905. Okay, the Gantt chart is the Gantt chart. The methodology is the same, the definitions are the same, the terms are the same. The only thing that has happened is it has become more and more automated and user-friendly because of software. So this has stood the test of time for nearly 116 years, okay? And I don't think of, I can't imagine too many things that have carried on for so long. So what does it do? It helps you define tasks or activities with their timelines. It helps you define the linkages, which we, which we just understood as dependencies. It helps you define your resources and it helps you track your progress. Very, very simple sounding stuff, right? It's really not rocket science, like I said. So what does it typically look like? Each bar on the Gantt chart represents an activity, and the length of the bar is typically equivalent to the time taken. So if something is going to take two days, then the length of the bar will be proportionate to two days. If something is going to take eight days, then the length of the bar is going to be four times the length of the earlier bar. The position of the bar, what you see on the right side is a calendar. Okay? And the position of the bar is going to indicate the start date and the end date of that particular activity. The spreadsheet-like uh, structure that you see on the left of the calendar is, is typically like a spreadsheet. It lists all the various activities that need to happen. And the sequence in which they get organized on the right, I don't know if the screen, yeah, it's pretty clear on the screen. You'll see those tiny little arrows connecting one bar to the next. Those tiny little arrows are defined by you when you define the dependency, because you know what, can, what has to finish before something has to start, right? As you plan the tasks and activities that need to happen. So those are dependencies which you will be defining as you create your project plan. Now imagine when these guys first started 100 odd years ago, they actually created a huge graph paper on a wall, okay? And you're talking about a wall, which is uh, maybe a graph paper that is six feet or five feet high and about uh, eight feet or 12 feet uh, in width. And a list of, uh, imagine a project would typically have anywhere between 100 to 200 activities. So you need to fit those 150 odd activities vertically. And then you need to have the horizontal space to represent time, uh, which may run from uh, anywhere between 6 to 18 months, depending on the time it takes for the project to get executed. And all of this has to be represented in one single view. And so the first Gantt charts, and, and I remember even now, uh, I mean, many of us are now a generation where we don't remember this, but uh, very, very early on in my career, I have been in companies where they used to have a project team and they had a project wall. And it was typically a fairly large room with a conference table. And in those days, you had the OHP. We didn't have projectors even. We had overhead transparencies. And one wall was dedicated to this Gantt chart. And uh, there used to be a ladder on that wall, a, a, a prefixed ladder, so that you could climb up the ladder and the ladder would roll from one end of the wall to the other. And that's how they would update the Gantt chart. Imagine the mess and how difficult it was. All of this is, has been made supremely easy and user-friendly by these PMIS systems, the project management information systems. There's a link in this, uh, which you see. Uh, 
uh, you can go into this link and you'll get a review of various project management softwares available out there. Uh, everything has a cost and all of these uh, softwares have uh, some license fee or the other. What we are going to use today is a free software, which all of you have downloaded. Uh, and uh, before we jump to that, uh, we are at the half an hour mark and we can take some questions before we jump into looking at what this software can do for us. Any questions at this point? Um, Ravi, uh, yeah, just uh, let me just get it started. Um, you know, uh, uh, these tools, uh, the dependencies, do you, is there also a mechanism by which you can uh, connect the dependencies to the finances also? Cash flows? Uh, the more so, elaborate yeah let me give you an example okay so yeah. what we are one of the things we find is that uh, very often there are situations where companies uh, the, the startups you know the projects run long they run out of cash and so on and so forth project money doesn't come in sometimes the uh, grant money hasn't come in on time whatever it is right so uh, actually uh, a gantt chart which is also linked to some of the uh, financial position is also very valuable. So uh, I am not sure that if you can link this, it will. It, you can link it to your resource consumption. Okay. And can right. you pull? Can you pull this out into an Excel sheet? Yes, you can From pull it there. out into an Excel sheet, and then you will have to separately link it to your cash position. Okay. Okay. But yeah. it can. It can. Uh, Project Libre is a free software, so it doesn't really have all that functionality. But if you invest in something like Microsoft Project, mm -hmm. which is a wee bit expensive for a startup, then you can have all of that connectivity. Uh, but having said that, I believe that if you know your monthly burn rate, I mean, we are discussing uh, startups which are you know not really abundance in terms of resources. Yeah. So uh, from that perspective, uh, getting a control of time if that is done, then actually many other problems are going to be mitigated, including the cash problem. I think a lot of it comes from not executing in uh, as per desired time. So hopefully, better project management will sort that out. Yes, yes. And uh, it's very, very valuable for uh, multiple reasons. Some of the things we find it very useful. One is, of course, that everybody's writing projects, right? Grant projects. And, right. um, um, and uh, so there... Um, it is very, very critical to put this out. Uh, if you have done it separately, simplify uh, putting out a simplified version in the grant proposal becomes much easier. So that we have seen um, if you're applying for uh, various different programs. The second, uh, uh, second uh, place is where suppose one is looking at an investment proposal also, right? And uh, pitching to an investor uh, thoroughness in project planning always helps uh, it, it, it shows it shows that uh, the person has done their homework first of all because when you start doing thoroughly that's when you realize oh i don't know this piece of information right absolutely right. yeah so that is another big area where we see it and also sometimes you have to make commitments on uh, what you're going to deliver to investors right uh, yeah. And uh, that uh, sometimes can even be linked to the next tranche of money that you get uh, or, uh, you know, uh, hitting those might change your valuations, for example, of the company. Uh, and therefore, uh, it becomes uh, quite critical again. And of course, Absolutely. this last one I told you where we link it to cash flows. Uh, we are doing it a little bit with Google Sheets sometimes mm. with some of our startups. But that's mm. another very important uh, uh, point where in a board meeting, the, uh, the board members will ask an entrepreneur, please tell me what's your runway like. Yeah. Okay. And uh, tell me which milestones you're going to hit before we can raise the next round of money. And how far are we are we behind ahead on this? So Correct. it becomes quite valuable uh, what uh, you have been uh, what, what you're uh, showing right now. So there's a yeah. question here. One yeah. has to uh, if one has to buy a project management tool. Which one would you suggest? So I think that it probably they'll have to look at the reviews, right? I you think yeah. Into... <laughs> they, uh, see the ultimate the holy grail is Microsoft Project. Okay, mm -hmm. <laughs> also also the most expensive and not very user friendly you need to get some formal training the training courses are available for that they're even available online 
but it's not the most user friendly software but absolutely massive functionality yeah. and it will include financial functionality yeah now one of the issues i have seen with software is typically we don't use more than i know in excel most of us don't use more than 5% of the functionality that is truly available in excel so uh, you have to pick and choose my belief is the biggest priority is get my activities in line and get them done on time and monitor them well and i believe that if that is done then most of other issues will be, will take care of themselves okay and from that perspective i will find the uh, i i found the free software which does this and that's yeah. what we're going to use in the demo today and in i i used to professionally use this when i was working and i was managing uh cross continental projects and i never had an issue with anybody pointing a finger at something that i lacked and it was a free software i saved the money and used it for something else we had money for microsoft project <laughs> that's a different issue okay. so uh, yeah. to answer your question you can pick and choose but i think a free software also will do the job as you get more and more adept or somebody on your team really becomes an adept uh at using this software and can really manage all the functionality very well then you can gift him as a bonus if he achieves something with a licensed copy of some high end software yeah so there's also a question about when to start planning for uh, regulatory processes so that we are ready for clinical trials so that sequencing i think uh, you're going all to illustrate this, yeah illustrate all how all of this all of this has to be planned actually very 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 early you should put your as soon as you have some visibility maybe till you don't have a proof of concept it's okay because it's a, that is a chaotic situation and that chaos actually breeds creativity so that's okay don't really regiment yourself into anything till you have a proof of concept ideation to proof of concept is unstructured time the day you have a proof of concept that is the day you guys have to sit down and say now from this point onwards still we launch the product we have to plan the entire thing out that's the day you plan your project and includes everything it includes regulatory includes clinical everything is going to come into your plan and you are going to put everything into sequence what do we have to do to make the next thing happen and we'll we'll understand more of it as we go along but the time to plan is the day your proof of concept is done Uh, so uh, ravi one other request was that see what um, one of the other issues is if you need a very detailed one you also need a lot of good data for example i need to know when i should start my uh, if i'm supposed to start my regulatory process i need to also be able to put down estimates of how long it will take and so on and so forth right i need to do my homework for that quite well Uh, so it also uh, the data uh, in needed will increase as the level of granularity uh, you know uh, becomes higher right the more and more resolution and, you bring and in. that and that typically becomes a reason to not do it so here is the <laughs> yeah. approach yes and so so here is what i recommend to all of you when you don't know something make an assumption put a number there <laughs> that's going to be version 1 of your project the software doesn't stop you from doing version 1 you have to put it out there you can always change it okay as you know so initially i have no idea how long it will take regulatory but regulatory is going to come uh, probably 8 months from now somewhere along the way i will find it and right now if i have put a timeline there 180 days because i have absolutely no idea 4 months from now i will know that it is actually taking 90 days i just go into my project file and update it sort of big deal but yeah. don't use that as a reason to not to not start make an assumption put a number there but understand your gant yeah. understand your linkage understand the visible impact of how activities are going to flow yep yeah. um one other uh, couple of comments uh, the first comment is uh, one of the situation in startups where you are finding it really really important to do this is uh, where companies are offering services and uh, the pricing um, and the cost uh, depend a lot on your ability to deliver projects on time 
mm. right and uh, that is something which of course the it companies have learned a lot in india where project management is extremely key to keeping uh, to for profitability of a given project right yeah all of them have dedicated program managers who don't yeah. write code yeah <laughs> right yeah. Yeah. so so that is one other situation that's relevant to us uh, to startups also because many of them will be also sometimes uh, looking at uh, executing uh, projects on the side or some once in uh, you know, many cases there might be some services of different kinds also uh, on uh, offer okay um and uh, so that is one other situation which i can uh, think of where it is uh very very critical anyway Absolutely. let's continue uh we will uh yeah this is one more issue people join and leave startups very fast could we incorporate man hours in this people there's a question join and leave so the time taken is al- always there and you can always replace one resource with another resource in the resource uh, section okay just, let's just continue the resource yeah. yeah all of this is all easily managed yeah okay shall we move on yes please so uh this is the free to air software it's called project libre it's an open source collaborated uh, collaborative software which was created by some uh, well wishers who did a very nice thing with a lot of functionality and that's what we're going to use and this brings us jumping into our first exercise where what we are going to do is to how do we start a new project so we understand how to open the software where is the file menu how do we enter project information how do we set up a calendar that's all we are going to do it's a 5 minute task so i'm going to jump in now to my project libre file which is already open and i hope it is visible i had yeah. shared the screen as well yeah it's visible right yeah yes So apologies that the screen looks a little small, but there's not too much I can do about it. Uh, if you have a if you have a large screen, then it will be very clear. If it's on a phone, you'll have a problem. So this is what you do: you see a menu on top. You have file, task, resource, view. So what you do is you click on file, and you click new. and it opens up a new project dialog box you give it a project name so i'm going to call this demo project manager is somebody xx by default the start date of the project is taken as today's date okay and today is uh, 13th of august so by default it takes it 13th of august you find a small window here forward scheduled and by default it is checked so leave it like that forward scheduled means the way the software will understand it is you are scheduling from today onwards you are listing activities and the completion date is going to be defined as a result of what you put in whereas backward scheduled means you will have a finish date okay so let's not complicate it that's not the kind of projects you'll be looking at anyway so simply leave forward scheduled as a checked box click okay and this is what appears in front of you on the left side you will see a Now this is fairly typical okay what we are doing here is fairly typical irrespective of which project management software you use even if you use microsoft project these steps are the same and uh, is sort of our project software is going to have little bit intricacies but broadly similar on the left you find a spreadsheet like structure it has name which is going to be the name of a task you can bring your mouse to the uh column separator and you can always move these columns and i like to do this always so that i can see more here then you see duration which is the time that task is going to take which you will be defining there's a start date which you will enter if you have entered start date and duration then the software will just calculate and put the finish date or you can enter a start date and finish date it will calculate the duration you can bring your mouse cursor to this separator between the spreadsheet section and the calendar section you can move it to the right now here you see this very interesting fellow called predecessor so a predecessor is what comes before this is how dependencies are defined so for any task 
this is a what are the predecessors for this task or what are the tasks that have to get completed before this one can begin so when you define that task number and you put the number here in the predecessor column the on the right side you will see gantt the gantt chart building the linkages and here is a resource column and you put in the name of the resource who is going to be responsible for that particular task or activity all right now <laughs> this is just to familiarize you with what all all this stuff looks like now one of the first things you need to do is to go you are still within the file menu in the file menu you see a calendar button so you click this calendar button and you find a calendar that appears and you find here sundays are grayed out saturdays are grayed out now uniformly most almost all project management software that is out there in the market are products of european or american companies and as a result it is five day week that's a luxury we in india do not have it's not five day week most of the time we are six day week and i know in the case of startups many of you are seven day week so what you do is select all saturdays by clicking on the s on top and you can see everything is selected change it to non default working time and now saturdays have become working and for the really enthusiastic and driven startups you can select all sundays and also make it non default working time so now we are working 24 by 7 by 365 because we are driven to make atmanirbhar bharat and i am going to use this seven days as uh, as my setting now having done this remember this is my calendar which is standard okay can you see this here i am circling it with my mouse but we want to make it as a new calendar so i want to create a new base calendar i am going to call it demo after the name of my file i want to make a copy of the calendar standard i say okay now this is my demo calendar okay so you see for on the left top corner of this box you see demo now in this demo calendar which is the calendar i am going to use for my company or for my project i am selecting all saturdays making it working selecting all sundays making it working and i say okay and my calendar is done right now it doesn't end there you have to also apply this calendar to your project so for that you go to the project information so i'll show that once again we are still in the file menu above the calendar button you see an information button you click on the information button and you see general information about the project so the name that manager name you put in the name you put in the start date of the project all of that is there right now here you find on the right column of all these buttons you find a base calendar so the base calendar change it from standard to demo because that's the calendar you will be applying for your project and close this window okay and that completes the setup of your calendar now we go to the resource menu so you see on the top four four menus you have you have file you have task you have resource and you have view go to the resource menu and go to this leftmost button that you see here just below the project libre logo called resources and here is a spreadsheet that has opened up where you can enter now in our case resources are mostly going to be people but resources can also be material and so on we'll not get into that we'll focus on using this system to manage activities done by people okay that's what that's the scope for our for what we are learning today so let's say names person 1 person 2 person 3 these are the three people who are going to work on projects the type of work that they do is basically going to be work you can put in contact information and stuff but i suggest don't bother yourself with these details ignore this material label because we are dealing with people max units leave it at 100% standard rate overtime rate so prema to answer your question when you put in this stuff it will start tracking actual money used mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. but it will not link it won't give you a cash flow but you will get actual money used yeah uh, which actually is not that hard to do because uh, you have fixed resources 
yeah and uh, you know for every month you know what they are uh, what you are paying them so that's you don't really need to do it this way but it, it's an option available yes. now the important thing guys is go to this base calendar which is the last column to the right it says standard now you don't want that because standard is five day week so you don't want one of your employees to goof off two days and work five days when you are working seven days so change all these guys to demo calendar as well so everybody is working to the calendar which you have set up and you are done and then you come back to the file bin so this is exercise 1 just fool around with this for about 5 minutes and uh, once in in about 5 so it's 546 now 551 on the dot we will start with the next i'll demonstrate exercise 2 so 5 minutes for you guys to open your copies of the software and fool around with this set up the calendar set up your resources okay over to you yeah ravi uh, while that is happening yeah would you tell us what are all the resources you can add people is one what else people material is essentially people and material okay mm -hmm. and uh, uh, in one file you can have multiple projects uh or a file means one project yeah one file is one project okay if you get a so any of the other software is more advanced software even project libre is building something like that now that functionality mm -hmm. is not yet there where it will allow you to balance resources across project okay uh, there's a question on what is rbs listed there uh don't bother about all those things at the moment <laughs> just ignore okay. them for the moment there are many things okay. there which i am deliberately keeping out of scope so that we focus on what we can do and get the maximum utilization for our uh, situation okay and if a person is running a company and there are say two projects running they should be doing one can chart or two grants two, two can grant charts okay. each project has one can chart so uh, in resources if people are using services from somewhere right rentals for example which will depend upon how much time the project takes then we, is that linked up here ah uh, see you use a resource which is so again you are discussing a resource which is costing you money yeah but not really impacting your project timeline so you only put in those resources here which are actively performing work in your project don't bother so much about the resources just put in the people who are going to be the responsible people for all the activities which form your timeline yeah. other resources uh, leave it out of this yeah so so in principle it should be possible though right to yeah, take yeah, yeah. them just like people uh, costing something per unit month yes yes and so but on. like yeah. i said like i said the i'll tell you what is the philosophy of what i am doing here with any software it is possible to you know try go so deep into the software that you you end up becoming a software expert but find it difficult to manage because your primary job is your project and your time and your activity <laughs> Hmm. so i am deliberately restricting the scope anybody who is interested enough can go deeper into it and if you buy a good software you will have tremendous amount of functionality but i believe that the primary functionality that we need to focus on on day one when none of us are using any pmi any pmis is to get our activities in line put them down on paper as a first step which we don't do we just talk about milestones we don't talk about tasks so we have to start doing that as a first step put those tasks down understand what is my gantt chart and where it is taking me and how do i get to my end point and learn to monitor so if yeah. we do this then this is 90% of the job done the remaining 10% bells and whistles are possible and we we can do that but i would suggest that today is not the day to go to that level of detail for our startups okay how many people are uh, actually have downloaded and are doing it right now say yes in the chat box okay we had some few quick yeses
Oh, a lot of them. Great. Well done, everybody. Make the most out of it. Yeah. Uh, there's a question on can we add categories to each line item? So, for example, activities relating to market landscaping can be highlighted in one color. Activities related to product building can be in another color. Is that possible? Yeah, it's not. You don't have to do it by colors. You will be grouping them by milestones. Yeah. Or you'll be group, grouping them by summary. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Grouping of it. And grouping is a very essential part of how you manage your tasks. Okay. Great. Okay. Let's continue. 51. Yeah. We're done. <laughs> okay. Excellent. So let's move on. So I'll just switch back to the PowerPoint. Now, the major elements of any project or any activity, series of activities that should happen to achieve a desired endpoint are resources, who will do what, tasks, what needs to be done, and the third is cost. I am deliberately keeping cost out of scope for today. We are focusing on resources and tasks. These are the core elements that are to be manipulated and organized. Definition of resource is anything that is owned by your organization that contributes to work or contributes to accomplishing a task. Okay. So material is a resource. Work put in by somebody is a resource. And the team, individuals of which will actually put in work is a resource. When you have a person as a resource, you see the work as the type over there. And that is expressed in units of time, either in hours or days or, and so on. So the fundamental building block in any project schedule is a task. And that is the base unit, okay? Individual tasks. So don't get too confused by all this. Just go back to the spreadsheet, which is what we are going to do as we jump into exercise two. We have already seen the resource menu. Now, uh, we are going to jump in actually to the task menu. I combined one and two because you guys are all sharp and smart and we have to save time. So this was exercise two, understanding the resource menu and practice updating resources, which you guys have already done. So we are straight away jumping to exercise three, which is understanding the task menu, learning to add tasks, enter durations, assign resources, sequence the tasks and add dependencies, and create summary tasks for milestones to answer the question which somebody had. So let's jump back to our demo. Now, to enter your tasks, you go back to the task menu on top, and then the leftmost button here called Gantt. Click the Gantt and you come back to that screen. All right. Now remember we have entered some resources, right? Okay, so let us take some tasks. And for sake of simplicity, I am going to say, uh, this is going to be a series of tasks which will create uh, a summary task. So let's say summary one. Summary one is a task. And I'm going to leave it as it is because this is going to be a summary task. So I'm not entering anything here. Now, on the very next row, I select the entire row. Now, I go to my uh, menu and I find a small button here called indent. I indent. I click on indent. Okay. And did you see what has happened now? It has changed the way it appears. Now the software understands that task one is a, one of the tasks that will lead to the summary one. Okay. So I have task one. I'm going to say task one is going to start on 13th. It's going to take three days. Then I have task two which is also going to take, which is going to take two days say. Then I have task three, which is going to take one day. Then I have task four, which is going to take four days. 
Now, all of these are appearing one below the other, and you can see the Gantt building up on the right. Now, the fifth task four, it is showing it in red. Okay, so why does it do it? Because this software or any project management software is constantly focusing on for the information that you provide, what is going to be the longest activity, right? So if you have seen here, four days is the longest activity, which means you cannot finish this set of activities the way you have defined. Nothing is connected to each other. The way you have defined it, your completion date will be 16th of August, right? So that's what the software is doing. Now you have to put in resources and we define resources as person one, person two, and so on, right? So see what's happening on the right. Task one is to be done by person one, two is to be done by person two, three is to be done by person three, four is again done by person one. So it is labeling each task with the resource who is supposed to carry out the task. Now we still haven't defined any dependency. So let's go about doing that. So let us say that task two cannot start till task one is finished. Now task one is row number two. So I put two here. Did you see what just happened? It has also changed what is in red. So because now task one plus task two is going to take five days, three days plus two days. And this becomes the longest time. Right? Now I add one more dependency. I put in task three to be can start only after task two is completed, which is three. And see what has happened now. This entire chain has become red. This chain that you see is the critical path. Coming back to that definition, which I skipped earlier. The critical uh, path is that chain of activities which will take the longest time, right? And that critical path is the thing you guys, when you build your project plan, you have to watch it like a hawk. Why? Because the critical path depends, uh, directly defines your end date for the project. And any delay of even a single day in a critical path activity will delay your end date. And that is easily visible to you by what, what the GAN shows you in red. Let us add task four to the critical path as well. So how do you do that? It depends on task three, which means task number four. You add that and the whole chain now has become critical, right? So three plus two plus one plus four is the total time, each one following the other, four tasks in sequence. And that's how life works, right? You typically have something that has to be finished before the next one can begin. Now you can go to the next row and add another summary, summary two. Now summary two is appearing as an indent, which you don't want. So you go back here and you outdent it. Ravi, uh, yeah. can I suggest uh, you can just write task one, two, three, four as task A, B, C, D, because then the rows and that won't get confused. Yeah, you understood oh. what I'm... Yeah, 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 no problem. So let's do that as we move ahead with summary two. Yeah. In summary two, let's have task A, let's have A, B, C, D. And let us select A, B, C, D and indent them again. So they got indented below summary two, right? Now we have not defined the time. So again, let's say two days, three days, three days, four days. Now you can see they're all blue. There are no dependencies defined because you haven't defined predecessors. But now see what happens. Okay, hold on a moment. Now suppose I say summary two, this group of activities cannot start before summary one is finished. So to give you an example, uh, say summary two is uh, regulatory submission and summary one is design dossier completion. So you cannot start regulatory submission till your design dossier is complete, right? So it's like that. So you can actually put predecessor one in front of summary two. Did you just see what happened? It moved the entire block of summary two to the end point. And you see how it is connecting up this arrow here. So this arrow is the end of summary one. 
and connected to the beginning of summary 2. So summary 2, which has for the purpose of understanding, we are saying regulatory submission. And summary 1, we are saying design dossier completion. Till design dossier is complete, we cannot start making regulatory submission. So we link it like that as a dependency. And you have the whole thing jumping. Now, within summary 2, we have ABCD. So again, we put in dependencies. For the sake of simplicity, I am saying B is dependent on A. So that is 7. C is dependent on B. That is 8. And D is dependent on C to finish. That is 9. And the whole thing has become a chain. Right? This is how you build it. And of course, you're supposed to put resources as well. I'm, not, I'm skipping that now. You can do it. It's not a big deal. Uh, just keep in mind that when you enter a resource name, and that's the limitation of functionality in this software, you don't get a dropdown here. It will be nice if you get a dropdown, but you don't. Okay, so if you make a spelling mistake here, it won't accept it. So if I say PRSON1, so it tells you you must ex enter existing resources from your resource pool, right? So you have to make sure you enter the same resource name that you entered in the resource sheet. Okay. So this is how you enter tasks. Let's just go back to what we were supposed to look at. Indent and outtent, create summary tasks. Uh, we've seen milestones. So each of these are, okay. Uh, we can also add a milestone. So let us say task E is completion. Okay, and if E is completion, then we can put E as uh, predecessor is 10. And you can double click this task and you can uh, display task as milestone. So a milestone task doesn't really have a time. It's just a marking a completion of something. Okay, so how did I do that? I double clicked on this. I went to task information. I chose the advanced tab and there is a small button here which you can click to display a task as a milestone. Okay, that's how you do milestones. So I think, uh, yeah, and you can like a spreadsheet, you can insert stuff, you can delete stuff. Keep in mind that, that if you have defined dependencies, then insertion and deletion will cause certain unexpected issues. So uh, better to remove the dependencies that you have put in place, remove the predecessors, delete them before you are deleting and adding tasks. Okay, but you can insert and delete like you do in Excel. So that's it for this part of the exercise. So uh, go ahead, you guys, enter tasks, enter summaries, uh, put in resources, enter your predecessors, try and take a small series of activities of stuff which you are actually doing. Enter them in the sequence in which they have to be executed and try and put in the dependencies and see how the game, try and put real life dates there, try and put real life durations there. It take any small set of six, seven things that need to happen to complete a certain group of uh, tasks or a certain milestone and put it in there and see what it looks like, see what your Gantt looks like. Okay, So uh, I think we'll have 10 minutes to do this. Yeah. Ravi, can you show again what how you did the milestone? Yeah, absolutely. So you double click on the task on the left. Mm -hmm. So you have this number here on the left, double click there. And you have a task information dialog box that opens up. Mm -hmm. Within that, you have tabs on the top, general, predecessors, successors, resources, advanced. Mm -hmm. On the advanced tab, you have on the right top, display task as milestone. Yeah. So just check that box. Mm -hmm. And it becomes a milestone. Okay. Is it possible? So guys, to... 10 minutes. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Sure. Let them start. Yeah. Uh, is it possible to see it uh, person wise also? Like in terms of uh, there are views. Wise? Yeah, yeah. Uh, once, oh. once we are through this part, then we'll look at the. Views. Okay, okay, okay. Good. It's yeah. possible. It's possible. Yeah. Yeah.
uh, Ravi, uh, where was mm-hmm. the forward schedule? That's one question that came up. Where was the forward schedule? Right in the beginning, in the project yeah. information. Yeah. And uh, so what file is file menu, project information box. Mm-hmm. And leave the forward schedule checked as it is. Otherwise, the dates will all go wonky and you won't understand what is happening. So leave that forward schedule as it is. What does the column on the left of name column indicate? Uh, it, it gives you a tick mark when a task is completed and stuff like that. Mm-hmm. Status. So it remains blank in the beginning. Yeah, it gives you a status update as you update the project. Mm-hmm. So at a glance, you can understand what's happening when you start updating. Okay. So Sum- Suman says she got an exclamatory mark there. That's why she was asking. Ignore it. I even I haven't figured out why that uh, why it does that. <laughs> <laughs> the only useful functionality there is the <laughs> is the tick mark. I'm sure it does many other things, but it's not something I've gone into. And uh, also, is there an uh, indent button in the resources page also? Uh, no, because you wouldn't. You'll still see the button there. Huh. But you don't need to indent. Unless uh, there is like a team of people or subset of it, is it? Maybe. No, you don't. You don't. You don't indent it here. <laughs> okay. Okay. Uh, there is a way to define team. Mm. Uh, no, uh, the way you do that is you select multiple resources mm-hmm. for a task. Mm-hmm. But it's best not to get into that. Uh, yeah. See that. Yeah. So since we are on that subject, I'll tell you, one of the things we need to remember, the way we will use it for projects is very different from the way a software company with 18 people writing code and four people doing QC, the way they would use it and the way we will use it are extremely different. That's because when you're writing code, for instance, everything is measured in hours Mm -hmm. and there is absolutely zero confusion. Resource one to write this segment of code, 17 hours, 40 minutes. After which resource two will take eight hours, 26 minutes. Mm -hmm. That is the, that is the way they are able to define it in terms of time. Now in our case, it's very, life works very differently because we are doing a wide variety of activities. We are following up with vendors. We are placing purchase orders. Then a vendor is giving a delivery. Another vendor is giving a delivery. There's a lead time involved in that part coming in. And that lead time of 40 days goes in here as time. Mm -hmm. Then you put a resource there. It doesn't mean that you as a resource are engaged for 40 days. Mm -hmm. Whereas in the case of the software, right segment one, 17 hours, that resource is fully utilized for the 17 hours. He can't do anything else. Yeah. And typically when you put multiple resources in front of a task, the software automatically divides the task time by two. If mm-hmm. something is taking 18 hours and you put two resources, then each, it becomes nine hours. Yeah. But that's not what you want because that's not the way we function. Mm-hmm. So, so best is to leave it as a single resource only and to not use multiple resources anywhere. Okay. So, Vaibhav is having difficulty finding uh, the saying people are not appearing on the resources column of the Gantt chart. It doesn't. I think he typed it. Ravi typed it. You, you, have, to type one. It. Yeah. you have to type it there. Yeah. And you're, you have to make sure whatever you entered in the resource uh, sheet, you have to put in the same one of the same names. If necessary, go back there, refer it or copy paste it. Yeah. I'm sure as they update the software, they'll provide a drop down at some point make life easier but it's not there today that is the cost of getting something free (laughs) can you go back to the file tab can you go back to the file tab or the yeah you're talking to me yeah 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 yeah, anything specific you want to look at? No, no, no. The, the current view is of resources page. So I thought ah, yeah, 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 can yeah, go yeah, back to the on. Gantt chart. Yeah, yeah. So that, that is visible. Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. 
there is a question on uh, while working on implementing these planned activities is there a way to put actuals and see what delays are there absolutely. i think that's that's absolutely. where we are going that's the crux that's that's where we will go yeah. so once you learn how to put in your tasks this is the planning stage yeah. we will also be looking at the update stage and we'll be looking at something very crucial called the baseline yeah So take time, maybe we saved a bit of time in the earlier exercise, so we can take an extra five minutes here, but just get familiar with all this, ask questions if you're getting stuck somewhere. Okay, so uh, Malvika was not able to put the person's name, uh, perhaps in the resources page, have you put the person's name? Yeah, first, you, have to first, you have to first populate the resources. Only then you can enter a resource against the task. Resources to be populated first. So, Webhub seems to have figured out a way to put the resources names from by double clicking on the box. <laughs> yes, you can also go into the task information menu yeah. and do it there. Yeah. Like I said, it's not rocket science. It's not a big deal. The other thing I remember was absent in this software is right-click functionality. Mm -hmm. So it's, it's, it's like a collaborative effort by people who are contributing time. So you know, I so keep yeah. that in mind when you're using free software. Doesn't have all functionality. Yeah. One of the other challenges in startups is that startups don't have too much redundancy in their system. Mm -hmm. um, and therefore, even say one person leaves, catching up again requires work, right? So, Absolutely. So, which is, which is yeah. where something like this is so valuable. Yes, and dependencies even by resource persons might be useful uh, in that case also. Like the fact that if person two is not there, you know, somebody else has to be assigned to that, otherwise it doesn't work. So That is where we'll speak about monitoring. Mm -hmm. Is it possible to reassign resources in the software? Yeah, just, just go to the resource column and change the resource. Okay. And then come back and change it in the Gantt chart also. Yeah, I mean, if you're knocking a resource out from a project, then you need <laughs> <a> resource, <laughs> if that's what you're saying. Hmm. <laughs> or change the name. Yeah. If a person changed. So as people get done with it, please type done on the chat box so that we can continue yeah. with the rest of the, okay. I combined one and two because I thought we will run out of time, but we are good on time now. So yeah. we can take some time here. Yeah. <laughs> so, Weber, you want to change the font color? You can't. Not, <laughs> not in this software. Bells and whistles are absent. I hope some of you are doing it with your own uh, specific example of a project so that the words mean more to you uh, yes. than this example. That way you will probably get more out of it. Like a sequence of steps that you might be following uh, to do a particular project. Since we are having time, we uh, let us see if we end up with about 10 minutes in the end after questions. We will ask for one volunteer to share a series of activities. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And we will actually build it on the screen for everyone to see. Sure. 
So let's say, you know, prototype build. First prototype build. We can take that as an example if somebody is at that stage. Probably, maybe Harshesh, you can volunteer. Yeah. <laughs> How are people doing? Have we seen any done yet? Uh, yeah, for a few, not enough, but I hope okay. more. Yeah, yeah. yeah five, more, five more minutes is not a problem. Is anybody struggling with their, uh, if so, please just type and we can figure out, uh, address some of them. Is the x-axis always uh, days? Yes. Not months, years. You can, you can go to zoom in and zoom out just yeah. below the file menu. Okay. I'm doing it on the screen as you see. Yeah. So now you see it as days. You zoom, zoom out. You see it as months. You can zoom out even more. And you can even get can get a view like this. And this is the view typically you use, you know, for mm -hmm. longish projects. Yeah. Typical project sizes, uh, per timelines for many companies would be at least uh, say eighteen months, two yes. years, 18, three years. Yeah. Eighteen to thirty six months is a typical range. Yeah. Is it possible to rearrange the no, row numbers? The first, no, the first column is fixed. Yeah, but can you insert a row? You can insert, you can insert. Yeah, okay. Yeah, I think uh, probably he wanted to change the numbers, row numbers. Uh, that should be possible by inserting rows or something. Yeah, like yeah. That, right? Just insert, just insert a row. So, so I'll show and, it. I'll and show will it the, on the screen? Yeah. And will the predecessor me. number also automatically increase? Change? Uh, let's look at it. So I'm putting a new here. So it has stuck. So you can see what has happened here. Predecessor is still row four, even mm -hmm. though I inserted a new row. Yeah. Yeah. Predecessor is still row four. Now I am saying task new. And that has become five, mm -hmm. but predecessor for six is still four. Yeah. <laughs> so it auto it keeps the relationships. Once you build a largest project, if you're going to do inserts and deletes, make sure you keep a copy. Yeah. Because it can sometimes mess up the dates. And if that happens, you want a copy to go back and you know, don't get lost. Um, so, uh, um, can you again show how to get the Gantt chart view? Uh, yeah, yeah. Yeah. So just... file, go to the file menu, go to the task menu in the task menu, right on the left, on the very left of that menu bar, you see this Gantt graphic You click on that. Yeah. Uh, what if there are two resources to be added? I think that's what we uh, we spoke about I, in the I beginning. Just, yeah, you yeah, can add just, one just, more. Yeah, just as a person four or something. If you want to add a new resource, go to the resource menu. So you see the resource menu here. I'm adding a person four. Taking care to allocate his calendar as demo. So now I have a resource four. Go back to task and get. So for A, I can go here. Yeah. 
resource and I can add person four. Assign. Close. Yeah. What if you need to add two persons to one task? Suggest you don't do that <laughs> because, okay, I'll show you what happens. Yeah. Now, seven, row number seven, task A, duration is two days. Now, if I double click, go to advanced, go to assignment, and assign a second resource. Are you guys able to see what it has done to the duration? Zero days. No, it has become one day. Uh -huh. It has become one day. Mm -hmm. Which is not going to be your situation. <coughs> oh, so you mean it is changing the time plan exactly. because you added exactly. the number of people. So you said double the number of people, so therefore it becomes faster. <laughs> yeah, 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 exactly. Exactly. So it takes it takes a very mathematical view of, of things which works in a situation where somebody is doing uh, software development, but doesn't work for us. Mm -hmm. Or let's say you have, I don't know, I can very think of, it's difficult to think of situations where we have that kind of work in our product development. Um, Working will have the time. Maybe it is there if you're doing some experimental work and you know, uh, two different experiments to be done and one guy does it one after the other and the, your second guy is also involved, yeah. then it will take half the time. In production, you can think of. Yeah, but that's not where you will be using project management anyway. Yeah. Our product development situation, very, very rare. So best is to stick to one person responsible for one task. Don't let it confuse you and you know, don't get confused. Mm -hmm. So do we have some more done yet? Yep, please do type done if you're done. I think you should have a, a some point we'll just move on and come yeah. back at the end. Yeah. There was the zoom functionality located just below the file button on the top menu. You see a zoom in and a zoom out <laughs> with a typical zoom type of icon, which yeah. you see in Excel Word, a similar icon. We can just click that to zoom in. Also. Ravi, I think we should Okay, continue. yeah, 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 yeah. We are going to move on. So this is what we did. We did exercise three. So now we have an idea of uh, starting a project, setting a start date, uh, fixing your calendar, making your own working calendar, making it six days or seven days or whatever you prefer, uh, populating the resource sheet, then going to the Gantt, uh, view in the task menu, then entering tasks, entering durations, assigning resources, uh, linking the tasks together in sequence. So, so one of the things to remember is enter the tasks in the sequence in which they will happen. Okay, so that everything looks clean. Uh, so, and, and then we understood how to indent and outdent so that we can have summary tasks and below that summary you have multiple things happening. Right? Now, let's look at a so we already had that question, multiple resources for a single task, and I already explained it, so I can skip that part. Now we will look at task usage and resource usage, okay? Uh, so hold on, let me move this fellow a little bit out. Okay. Yeah. So we have a view menu, okay? And in this view menu, if you click on resource usage, okay, give me a second. Here. Now, if you see what has come below, you selected task one, and what you see in the sub window, it has opened up below is how person one is engaged. Yeah, can you see it? Mm -hmm. 
So there is stuff here like leveling, where if some resource is overloaded, you can allow the software to level. But I suggest don't do that because it's a little complex and uh, you know it is better to have this visual representation of how somebody is loaded and then use it to uh, balance if necessary that you assign somebody else and change this person from a particular task. More often than not, except for actual maybe detailing, detailed design work or writing a spec document or uh, physically building a prototype, those are the only cases where our resources will be fully engaged. Otherwise, more often than not, our tasks are tasks which do not engage resources fully. Okay, when we are getting things done. A lot of the times we are actually getting things done from others. We're getting things done from vendors, from suppliers. We are putting things together. We are getting components organized. Uh, only when we are doing a physical build, maybe, that's where we have a full-time occupation of a resource. Otherwise, we don't have full-time occupation of resources most of the time. So we need to keep that in mind and all these factors come in. That is why don't let the software do auto-leveling because uh, the software takes a mathematical view. The way we saw with multiple uh, resources, it simply divides duration by two. And that's not a realistic situation for us. Okay. But this is where you can go and look at how a person is occupied. Okay, so that's the, so where, where is this? This is in the view menu. In view menu, go to resource usage. And then you select a particular task. Now this is a task involving person two. Person two has only one task. Now the work is showing as 16 hours, right? That is the work content for two days because it is two days times eight hours or three days times eight hours is 24 hours for task one. And then task four is four days, four days times eight hours is 32 hours. It takes it as an eight hour day. Okay. And how is the time distributed? On these three days, it is eight hours each. And on these four days, it is eight hours each. Okay, this is what you can see. And this resource has nothing to do in these three days in between. That's the way it looks. But the fact is, depending on the nature of the task, uh, this resource may not actually be engaged for the full of the eight hours. Okay, that's also a factor we have to keep in mind. And that's why any balancing that we need to do to see if a person is overloaded is something that you can do simply by having this view in front of you. So this is what you typically do once you have populated all the activities in your project from start to finish. And then if some overloading is happening, go to the resource view and look at each resource and see how they are engaged in terms of time. And that gives you a visual indication which you can use to do any adjustments. Okay. So moving back. So we saw task. There's a task usage view also. Okay. Now, this is more useful if you have the multiple resources per task situation, which we are typically not going to have. So, this is not going to be very useful for us. So, we stick to the resource usage view. Okay. So, that is a view that you have. Moving on. Most important. Baselines, updates, and delays. So let us jump to another project file to see this. Okay, hold on. I'm stopping share for a moment because I want to uh, share one more file. Give me a second.
Yes. Is it visible? Yeah. Okay. Now, this is another example I have created where you will see some gray lines below each of the tasks. Can you see the gray lines? Mm -hmm. I have got those gray lines in by saying save baseline. Now I'm doing clear baseline, okay? And if I clear the baseline for the entire project, I don't have the gray lines anymore, okay? And if I simply go, so I'm in the file menu, and in the file menu, I say save baseline, and I have got this small dialog box that opens up, which says baseline now. I select for entire project that is by default, not for selected tasks. I say, okay, and it puts in these gray lines. What are these gray lines? Now, what is a baseline? Once you have determined all the activities comprising your project, and you have completed all internal discussions with your team members, and all of you feel that these are reasonable, this is achievable, and we should be able to meet this requirement in terms of activities, durations, and getting the job done by this end date. Once this is all agreed, then you go and save a baseline. Now, why do you save a baseline? Because as you start monitoring your project, what are you going to do? You are going to update what happens, right? So let us start updating. Now, for example, we select task two. It was a two-day duration task. It was supposed to start on 2nd of August and finish on 3rd of August. So we select the task and go to update. Okay. Now, hold on a moment. Okay. So what has happened when I updated this task? It says that it is complete and you see this black line here. Okay, this black bar in the middle of the Gantt bar, which says that the task is completed. Okay, now let's pick a task, which is somewhat, let's go to the next task. Okay. And let us update. Selected task. Okay, so this is completed on time as well. Okay. So we are saying that all of these got completed on time. Okay. Now let us select task four. It was supposed to complete on 10th. We say update for selected task also completed. Now task five, we say update also completed on time. Okay. Let's go to task six. Okay. Okay, hold on a moment. I need to sort this out a little bit. Ah, okay. okay. Probably need to type it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. So I was doing something wrong, and I'll tell you what I was doing wrong. That's why I was having a problem. I was in the file menu. 
while I was hitting update. So if you do an update with the file menu, it updates the entire project, all tasks. Okay, that's not what you want to do. You want to be in the task menu, then you hit an update. Now we are at task seven, task five, row number seven, a two day affair, which was supposed to start on 11th and finish on 12th. And it has this gray line below, and you can see the Gantt bar here. Now I am on this task. I am selecting update. Now, what do you see in this update menu? You have the name of the task. You have percentage complete. You have a start date and a finish date as you have defined in the beginning. And then you have an actual start and an actual finish. Okay, so hold on. I'm going to show you this from the beginning. So just give me a second. I am going to go back. Okay, this is all old tasks, so it won't allow a change because the dates are already gone. Okay. You can change this fellow. We can probably change this fellow. Yeah, okay. Right. Now, as you can see, everything is in red. What does it mean? It means that every single activity is, a, is on the critical path because each task is linked by a dependency to the next task. And your project start date here was 2nd of August and the finish date is 16th of August, right? It has to finish by 16th of August if everything happens on time. Now, let us go to task three which was supposed to start on 6th and end by 8th, 6, 7, 8, that is three days. Yeah, duration defined as three days. I am going to the update option and I am saying that it was supposed to start on 6th. It started on 6th, that is okay, actual start, but actual finish, instead of 8th, it went to the 10th, closed. Now, have you seen what's happened here? It has moved, it has made the bar longer for task three. It has changed the finish date to 10th of August, which is the actual finish that you put in. Now, in this file, I have deliberately added the column of baseline finish. Okay. And I didn't show you this, but here, anywhere, you can right click and do an insert column. And if you do an insert column, then the two useful columns which you can insert are baseline start and baseline finish. Okay. Now, what are baseline start, baseline finish? They are the dates that you defined at the beginning of the project. Right. But those dates will change as you update. If something got started later, uh, it got delayed by a couple of days to start, you're going to put the actual date there that is the date that will show in start. It, if it finished later, it, that is the date it will show in the finish column. So it is good to have the baseline finish date here. So you know it was supposed to finish on 8th August, but when I updated it, I had to update it because it got delayed by two days. So it finished on 10th. Now see the impact. This got pushed out to the 10th. Now it has pushed out the next sequential item that was to happen. It has pushed it out by the same two days. The gray line is here. The red bar has moved to the right. Your next summary MS2 has also got pushed out by the same amount of delay. Your next one R2 is also pushed out by same amount of delay. This one, sorry, task five. Task six is also pushed out by that delay. Seven is also pushed out by the delay. And you were supposed to finish the project on 16th. This delay is causing you to finish the project on 18th, right? Now let us say task number four, things got worse. It was a part that was to come from somebody. It was supposed to come on the 12th. It did not come on the 12th. It actual start, I placed my order on the 11th. He was supposed to deliver next day. So I placed my order on time, but instead of coming on the 12th, it is, it's coming on the 16th. See what has happened. That delay has further pushed all the subsequent activities out. And the whole thing has moved out. Now, this is the visibility that you will have as you update. 
okay as things actually happen this is going to give you a live situation and here we are seeing everything on the critical path so it pushes the entire critical path out to the extent of delay that a single task or a single activity is causing right and this is the most important and the most useful useful feature this is what happens when you start having visibility of the connectivity of this chain the critical path is nothing but a chain it is a chain of activities that should happen to arrive at an end point and any delay in the and this chain of activities remember in projects like the projects which you do which is the product development is likely to involve anywhere between 70 to 200 such activities all of them sequenced in some form or the other and many many of them dependent on other things to get completed and unless you have unless you create this listing unless you create this sequence and unless you have this visibility and unless you monitor it and when you update and you start seeing delay you will immediately by virtue of software like this and by virtue of having a visible updated updatable can you can immediately visualize what is going to happen to your project okay this two day delay here is going to lead to what kind of a delay for my end point and i am going to get delayed so this is how it brings in a tremendous amount of control <clears throat> or at least it gives you clear visibility you will know today if something is going to get delayed later on it also gives you many many possible things you can do you may have buffers in subsequent activities which you can consume and you can pull things back okay more importantly as you see the tasks in your in your weekly review you need to look at things that have to finish in this week and the next week and the week after that you have to look at the finish dates for those activities which are on the critical path you have to watch them like a hawk and and when you watch them and you see that something is likely to get delayed that's where you put in extra effort because you know that anything that is on critical path if it is delayed it will affect your entire time now i kept on repeating critical path because remember you are going to have many many activities which are not on the critical path right what is the critical path it is the summation of those activities which together contribute to the longest possible time so it's going to be a certain select activities which will contribute to longest possible time but there will be many activities which do not contribute to the longest possible time right and those are the activities where you automatically have some buffer where you don't necessarily have to you know you have you have designated 15 days to complete this but <clears throat> beyond the 15 days you may have another 8 days before that activity touches the critical path right so if somebody has to say okay stop this for a while but attend to that because that is on critical path these are the kind of decisions you will be able to take you know this is important do this now that can wait this kind of decision making becomes very easy and and uh, very practical and very easy to implement by having the visibility of this kind of can chat moving back ravi i suppose you can also if it's yeah. happened sooner than usual then you can do that as well right you can update that as well and it will move everything it will it will advance everything by that time okay a couple of questions one is yeah. uh, uh if the baseline is selected then can we uh, then is it so that we cannot change the plan you can have a second baseline okay. and you can have a third baseline so here you can have up to 10 baselines mm -hmm. pmis creators in their wisdom almost everybody provides 10 baselines <laughs> so they expect that beyond 10 <laughs> you better rethink your life <laughs> that is <laughs> that, that is their expectation i think <laughs> okay and uh, there is also another question on youtube which is can we set auto reminders can we add assignees to it uh one of the things i'm going to speak about now which is governance and i'll cover this question there but remember there is no auto project management nothing is automatic and we'll speak about that in governance mm -hmm. last 5 minutes of this before jumping to the last part i am going to just touch upon this and uh, 
if it sounds confusing don't bother about it but you are going to struggle a little bit as you start developing your first project plan and that's where this concept can come in handy and this is the concept of something called the wbs or a work breakdown structure okay so what is this concept what does it mean so typically when what what did we see in the gantt we defined activities a has to happen after a b has to happen after b c has to happen and so on to achieve something now typically people found these are the guys uh, who created this work breakdown structure us department of defense nasa whoever are these uh, the guys who created it that the human mind thinks better when you have a sum or an end point and you break it down asking yourself the question what does it do to reach here what do i have to do to reach here so i have to do this okay so to do this what do i have to do so i have to do that okay to do that what do i have to do i have to do x y z so breaking down from a whole into its parts makes for enables you to be more complete and less likely to miss out on the task now this breakdown as you go on breaking it down what are you breaking it down into you are breaking it down into the tasks okay so you start with the end point so in this case this example if you see the end point is construction of a house that is your end result product is launched so to construct a house what all needs to be finished my internals need to be finished my foundation needs to be finished my external needs to be finished these three okay to complete my internal what all do i need to do i need to finish electrical i need to finish plumbing okay so to finish plumbing what do i need to do i have to finish rough in plumbing finish set plumbing fixtures and trim finish my test and clean so this is how you break it down so this is called a work breakdown structure so you start with an end point or a goal or an outcome this is like your milestone that you typically put in your excel for a uh, plan submission you start with that milestone so prototype build completed that is your milestone to complete my prototype build what do i need so i need 1 2 3 4 parts to complete these parts what do i need so i need designs okay i need drawings i need final specification okay to get to this specification what do i need so i may have to finish some work to reach there that's how you break it down okay so it focuses on deliverable so this is not a list of tasks but you go reverse you start with this and break down the work all the way to the bottom and then from when you go from bottom to top you have you have the list of tasks in sequence right so this is one way of or it's like a it's like a predecessor step or a prior step before you actually start building a project plan it's supposed to be easier to do it this way it's logical it's also less likely that you will miss out on something so here's an example on the next slide where is the next slide why are you not moving hold on for a moment my laptop seems to be hanging hold on yeah so why do we why do you do a wds before the gantt why is it recommended because like i explained you get this is an outcome you start with the outcome and break it down into its pieces okay so this is why you do it so here is a typical thing right if you are talking about a medical device for a product launch what all needs to be done so to launch my product i need regulatory approval i need my launch stocks ready i need my initial distribution network in place i need to have a launch plan i need to have a sales team right you can think of these five if these five things are done i can launch so for my regulatory approval what do i need i need to do a regulatory submission to do my submission what do i need i need a design dossier i need a technical file okay what else do i need i need a plant layout approval to get a plant layout approval what do i need to do i need to prepare the layout submit the layout do a layout meeting right so this is the way you can break it down and then if you go from down up prepare layout will become a task submission of layout becomes a task doing a layout meeting with the state fda becomes a task preparing technical file becomes a task now pre preparing technical file may be a summary task it may have many sub tasks below it 
preparing design dossier may be a summary task okay so and and so this is how you can do a wbs and then from the wbs you can do a wbs on chart paper you can do it on a big white board you know as a team and then from bottom up you go on listing the tasks and putting them into your cant into your project management software so that's how a wbs can be useful now to answer the question on automation all of you need to understand that if you want to get things done in terms of any activity which involves multiple people then many of us have this uh, i would say mistaken impression that sending a software sends an automated reminder and things will get done so for those of you who live in this world please please come out of this world when it comes to people teams and activities the only 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 thing that works is communication communication constant communication and communication not by way of email and whatsapp messages but communication as in human communication face to face you have to talk and you have to do this as a team okay the only thing that works in project management is to get the entire team together once every week for a project status review and every single person has to report on not only what has what was supposed to get completed in the last 5 to 6 days but also on the status of what is at risk of the things that are going to get completed in the next 7 to 15 days and this has to be a communication because no tasks and no activities are without a problem no project is without a problem and the only way these will get sorted out and and get very easily sorted out is when a team member shares that this i am afraid is not going to happen because of this reason it is that anticipation it is this communication and this communication doesn't happen by automation because solutions need to be found on a constant day to day basis and what are the solutions that need to be found which is the team member that can help you know okay you make a call and this will get done or i will make a call or i will come with you to this supplier you know this kind of actions get decided in this in this monitoring okay so this kind of one on one or let's say one on team where the whole team is getting together of course with the benefits of uh, what we have today of online meetings and so on this is equally possible to do online you have five team members at remote locations or you have five people at home or you have one person outside traveling and other three people are in the office it really doesn't matter you you have devices everywhere you have connectivity all the time now we are doing a zoom meeting we are doing a full program so this kind of but this kind of a meeting on a periodic basis typically a weekly basis is absolutely mandatory okay so if you don't do this and if you send an email be very very sure that is the path to disaster sending emails or having a system generate an auto reminder and expecting that the work will happen you will only discover after a month that many many things that were supposed to happen did not happen right so this is the all important aspect of governance getting things done everything is about getting things done when they are supposed to be done and governance is the process which you have to put in to make sure it happens and that is done only by review review monitor and review monitor and review and monitoring and reviewing does not happen it's not a solitary act monitoring and reviewing in the case of a project is a group activity and the entire group has to own the fact that tasks which were supposed to happen are they happening are they not happening are there obstacles not only on the tasks where which were supposed to finish last week but more importantly you have to start anticipating you have to start surfacing risks of of tasks getting delayed for those things that have to happen in the next 7 days next 15 days next 20 days so that's the horizon which you have to look at every time you meet the horizon you see is last 7 days 
and next 15 to 20 days. That's the horizon that you look at. So you're looking at a certain section of your Gantt, okay? The activities that are supposed to happen. And if you guys as a team make it a point to look at the next 15 days every time and you are able to anticipate what may go wrong, you will find yourself becoming sharper and smarter at anticipating problems. And once you start anticipating problems and proactively handling them, and especially when you say, oh, no, 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 this is on critical path. I don't care. I'm dropping what I'm doing today. I'm going to that field right now. Somebody is not answering the phone, right? Critical supplier who's, who's supposed to supply your PCB. Delivery is supposed to come next week or delivery is supposed to come two weeks from now. And he has been building it for the last three weeks. All of a sudden, your engineer tells you for the last three days, he's not picking up the phone. Okay. Now his part is supposed to reach you for your prototype build three weeks from now. But for three days, he's not answered the phone. Has to be loud bells ringing in your head. And because it's a critical path activity. If that prototype, if that PCP doesn't come, everything else is coming. The casing is already here. Other components are already here. Everything is here. But if this thing doesn't come three weeks from now, our prototype will be delayed. Prototype is delayed, investor meeting delayed. Investor meeting delayed. If you put the dates there, you'll see the cascading effect. We just saw that, right? So this is how you can take a decision. Okay, drop everything. What am I doing today? I'm doing this. Is it critical path? No. Can I delay it by day? Yes. Jump. Get into a car. Come with me. We are going to visit the supplier. Go there physically. You find that some major issue has taken place. Maybe he is sick or whatever is the reason. But you go there. You physically plonk yourself in front of the supplier and he understands that he either has to deliver, put up or shut up. Right? He either has to deliver. And the pressure that this will put on that supplier to deliver on committed day is enormously high. The same thing. If you, if you uh, call him up two days before delivery date and he says, I am extremely sorry, but something happened, this happened, that happened, this reason, that reason, and I can't deliver for another three weeks. That's when you realize. So, this governance, this continuous communication, and this ability to anticipate and proactively act on, on those aspects which can cause a delay in the horizon of the next two to three weeks. This is absolutely the key, right? So I have underlined two things here, discipline and reviews. All of this can work only if whoever takes the onus of managing the project, of making sure we do things when, when we commit to do them. And in the case of most of you guys, this has to be you, the founder, or if it is two co-founders, one of you has to own this process. You are a tiny organization. You are two, three, four, five, six people, right? This is not really so huge and unwieldy. All that it requires is discipline. If you guys set aside a particular amount of time and this kind of review for the nature of activities you're doing will not take more than one hour or one and a half hours per week once you have built your plan. One to one and a half per hours per week, the same time every single week irrespective of only if somebody is so badly sick that he is hospitalized and cannot speak, you know, or he is dead. Sorry to say that. These are the only two reasons why somebody is not allowed, somebody is allowed to miss that meeting. Otherwise, the discipline is no matter where in the world you may be, every member who is supposed to be in that meeting has to be in that meeting. At this designated time of day, on this particular day of the week, this meeting has to happen. And the activities have to be reviewed and the anticipation of what has to happen in the next three weeks absolutely has to happen. And when you are able to bring in this kind of discipline into conducting, into monitoring your project, updating what's happening, looking at the impact, proactively heading off the problems that you may see. Once you start doing this, you'll find a world of difference that the days of missing dates and the days of living with delay will be gone. And that is an absolute promise that I can make to you. So that's, that's all I have. And I think we may have a number of questions. And I managed to finish spot on at 7 o'clock. So <laughs> we have good okay. time for questions. Uh, 
Ravi, uh, maybe we can take a few questions yeah. while the questions are coming up. There's one on uh, uh, whether we can include, um, let's say there's a situation where, you know, the sequence depends upon decisions. Like if this happens, then go this way. And if that happens, go that way. How do you deal with that? Build two chains in your uh, Gantt. Hmm. And, and have two dependencies, right? Have, uh, yeah, yeah, absolutely. And then you can always knock out one dependency when you know. Mm -hmm. And when you knock out the dependency, you can exclude those tasks from the chain. Okay. Um, if only percentage of the work is completed, then you can still update the task. You tasks. can update. You can update. That's what you should do every week. When you go into that task update menu. Okay. So if it is an ongoing thing, which is not yet due, then you keep yeah. updating 10%, 15%, 20%. And it gives a nice visual indicator about how much part of it is complete with that black bar in the middle of the bar, task bar. Okay. Um, there's a question on, uh, apart from Excel, is there any good software for performing what-if analysis of finance requirements versus project schedule? <laughs> Premrat, you may be a better person to answer that. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, no, linking has always been an issue. Um, you know, there are people who are using very sophisticated software, but very often for startups, I don't think that many of these things are really working or required. Yeah. Um, so we'll defer this question for the moment. Maybe ask, yeah. we'll ask somebody else. Uh, I think, uh, Ravi, you want to take up one example from somebody if you have time. I have time, but we Ashish are is ready. Top. <laughs> yeah. yeah, so people who want to leave can, of course, leave, but uh, uh, we can take up one example. So, Harshish is ready, I think. Okay. So, yeah. uh, and uh, there's a question in case of more baselines, are there color indicators or different baselines? Do different baselines show up with different colors? Uh, you'll have to try and see. Okay. But no, color is not the strong point for Project Libre. Okay. Yeah. Uh, some of you will have access to some of these other paid softwares. So perhaps you'll have more functionality. You can try it out. Also, you can I, give it, if trial versions you have, are available, please try it out. I think you have MS project at VC, right? I thought you had one license or something. Yeah, I think so. Uh, yeah. But that is uh, uh, probably associated with the Protoshop, right? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay. okay. Anyway, um, how, how do you want to do it? Uh, yeah. So Harshish, you want to... Yeah, uh, Harshay, you want to give us a very short description of what your project uh, is, right? Yeah, what the project is and what activities you want to, what segment of activities you want to put in here. Select about maybe something like eight, ten activities or so, something which is a small summary. Right. Okay. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So, in in a very simple essence, we are basically building a robotic arm, uh, okay. which kind of connects to your leg and takes over the physiotherapy exercises. So, in okay. a way, it makes you do exercises on the leg. Now, okay. a robotic arm, we are at a stage where we are building our, uh, I would say, beta prototype, which is the representative of the entire product. And okay. uh, we are following a stage where we are building the uh, one joint first, let's say a joint for your hip, then hmm. for your knee, and then for your ankle. Okay. Right? Uh, I cannot share my screen. If someone can just allow me, I will also share my screen. Uh, yeah. Can you unshare, please, Ravi? Yeah, just give me a second. Right. Sorry. And so, uh, the, can you give him rights, please? Yeah, I have allowed him to share. Okay. Try it, Harshish. Yes. So, uh, first and foremost, I, in fact, wanted to say thank you because uh, you have saved me a lot of trouble. Uh, I basically do this on Excel based on my previous experience with Daimler, where weekly we have value proposition, uh, need analysis uh, and all and then our milestones are based on these small uh, uh, red marks. And then if there is any delay, we kind of show it like this, that, you know, we have not started procuring yet, for example. However, now seeing right. this, it actually gives me a lot of leeway to work on a lot of things. Uh, yeah, yeah. So one minimum viable product, uh, in essence, knee joint. Yeah. Ankle joint and hip joint, but yeah. joint. By joint, I mean, it's just the mechanical structure. However, we also need to build a very simple IoT communication to connect with it. We need right. to have a simple web app to be able to see what's happening. And we need right. to design the power and control circuit, which has its right. own list of working. Right. Uh, right. 
and then finally marry all systems so knee right. joint and then you marry all this iot with web app with this right so right we test and then we get down to ankle and hip now right. i could plan the activities however i found it hard to uh, tell what is right what is i mean what is going as per actuals where are the delays uh, i think i'll have to go through the sessions again but i have a particular doubt uh, ravi yeah. Yeah. where now for example we have to finalize the components yeah we need to procure and manufacture those components or manufacture yes, yes. you so have to break this down you have to break right. this down further definitely definitely it's their yeah. part of in the interest of time i just put it here yeah yeah yeah, yeah 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 however before i assemble i also need to design a static skeleton which kind of connects to your body now yeah. before you assemble it the predecessor is based on both these things it's either yeah. design put, static put, or procure put now, both five put put both five and six there oh we can do that yeah yeah put both five and six there okay. 5 comma 6 comma 6 5 comma 6 enter oh there you are exactly exactly so now i don't know as per actuals which one may finish further this is just like planned as such however okay Correct. thank you so that's what makes yeah, sense yeah yeah and similarly so you can have so i i missed this out earlier you can have multiple predecessors hmm. you can also have i also skipped on certain things but you can also now the standard dependency is a finish to start right something finishes only then the next one can start Mm. but you can have other dependencies as well you can have finish to finish understood now in this case both of these have to happen for assemble and test to happen right 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 so you can also have finish to finish hmm so, so that is also possible start to start is also possible so if you double click on that and go into the task information menu you will find the options to put different okay. types of dependencies Or you can, can even click. You can even click on the arrow. Can you give an example of a finish to finish? Now see the time. Go. Now this I'm is sorry. a very good example of finish to finish. He, hmm. he cannot assemble and test till his static skeleton is ready and the components are ready. Yes. Both have to be complete, right? Yes. So this is finish to finish. So you can change the type. The, so how uh, do in, I... in the same box that you see in in the same box no 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 stick to predecessors okay. go to predecessors tab right your right. predecessor id ha oh. type hmm. yeah 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 you can change this both to finish to finish and yeah close now see what it has done it has hmm. moved everything to the end understood it yeah yeah so you you can and it has uh, in the predecessor column it is 5 ff and 6 ff Right, right. So basically, just double click on it and then change right. the type over here. Hmm. Change the type, yeah. So FF is finished to finish. FS is finished to start. Finished to start is the most this thing. Now, even if you don't do this, it's okay. It just moves the buffer. That's all it does. Understood. So, for example, if you if you're paying money for components, you don't want to pay till you really need them. Hmm. so so it, that that's how it allows you to you know schedule right you got what i'm saying yeah yeah so uh, so you develop your iot develop simple web app these are not on your critical you have not uh, connected them with predecessors no because that will happen on the site i don't but, need a predecessor to develop iot and that's taken care by someone yeah else. yeah you can you can start it but uh, nothing else is depending on this right but right. your knee joint won't be complete without these things getting done exactly and exactly. that is why this is coming within coming within the summary but okay now for everybody and for you harshesh very important mm -hmm. when we see when we see stand alone things like this mm -hmm. and if other things are critical and Front we see load. a big buffer mm -hmm. we see a big buffer right mm -hmm. the temptation always is that siddesh who is working on this are tere paas to aur 20 din hai ha ah. right so mm -hmm. so do one thing we are we are a little bit stuck in this uh, procuring and manufacturing components that supplier is delaying so can you just rush to baroda and get this thing done and come back mm. right and then he goes yes. and he comes back somehow more delays happen and you don't you have to watch this because you don't want a non critical task becoming critical mm -hmm. it started off as non critical task with lot of buffer mm. but if the start date 
for item number eight gets delayed by about 16 days, then suddenly it will become critical. True. Right? So that is a thing to also keep in mind. And that's why the review past seven days and next 20 days. This is the thing that has to always, this is the golden rule. Okay. When I am hmm. sitting for a weekly review, what happened last week and what has to happen next three weeks. Hmm. If you look at all of these together, you will never have an issue. Understood. Uh, yeah, this is this is nicely done. Yeah, you got you got the hang of it. Exactly the way you do it. Uh, Ravi, one more question. Now, for example, if I want to share this with a lot of people and do some kind of collaboration, is that possible? Like all the people in the team. So if I change something, it kind of reflects onto their uh, file as well. Is These that people, possible? In Libre, any way? Just go to the Libre site. There was talk on that site about developing a cloud version. Hmm. I think it's chargeable. And knowing the project team, it will not be expensive. It will be nominal. You can check out the cloud version, which will allow collaboration and individuals updating completion. Mm. But uh, for everybody, again, is because individuals are completing is not a reason to skip the discipline of a weekly review. Mm -hmm. So somebody can update percentage. Right. But the weekly review where the whole team gets visibility of what I am doing and what others are doing and how the interconnected tasks are behaving and what are what is happening and what is not happening. This visibility has to be there for the whole team. People also have to learn to collaborate. And everyone also has to understand that I did my bit, but this guy got delayed and therefore, so everybody loses. So everyone has to understand that everyone wins or everyone loses. Mm. Okay, that's the, that's the way it works in a team. It's like a hockey team or a football team. It doesn't matter if one person is doing very well. You know, then, then it's up, actually uh, up to, uh, you know, the team leader to make sure that the person who is ahead of other things can actually support others. So that's the kind of activity, uh, collaborative work that has to be created. Thank you so much, Ravi. And uh, I will probably shift from Excel to Project Libre and uh, contact you if required to Absolutely. Uh, work Absolutely. on this. Further. Because Excel after a while just becomes limiting to work in this kind of work. So uh, Excel, Excel is static. The thing with Excel right, is exactly. firstly, it is it is quite painstaking to build what you have built. I know how much time it would yes. take to, to create this, to adjust all the columns, right. and then to select those cells and color them. This is extremely painstaking. Hmm. So the creation part of it, but, but the one thing which you already have in place is your task hmm. list because you've been hmm. doing this. Now you can just copy paste column F. Hmm as it is from here into Libre or into any oh, project software. Okay. Can I do that right away? Just copy. Try it, try it, try it. Just go, just oh go to God, your Excel. Okay. Don't, 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 don't. Mm. Yeah, there you go. There you go. Right. And then as you, as you just put in the dates, it will build the Gantt for you. In fact, it has also taken these kind of uh, indents. Indent, indenting is also done rightly. Indents. Yeah, yeah, it, it picks from Excel. Mm -hmm. Whatever you put in Excel, it picks and pastes as it right. is. Fine. Thank you so much. Uh, I was just lucky with the Excel to have a, a template from my previous company, which I continue using. So that right. way it was lucky. Right. Thank you. Right. Yeah. Okay. Uh, there's a question here on uh, is a good way to actually break up the project into summaries, milestones based on uh, based on yes. broad activity. Yes. Uh, and uh, sorry, I just lost the text there. What was that? Um, uh, milestone based or broad activity type based technical procurement hiring etc uh, let me have a look at the question what's a good way to actually break up the project into summaries milestone based or broad activity milestone based is the best go go by milestones go by thing go by outcomes go by what you have to achieve and if what you have to achieve involves some hiring work it involves some uh, allied work, it involves some consultation with finance, it involves some allocation. What needs to be done needs to be done because your goal is your goal. So it has, it's a goal focus. So better to have a goal focus on what does it take to reach there. Okay, that, that's, that's what the WBS is also based on, the work breakdown. 
I need to reach here. I need to get this done. To get this done, what all do I need to do? And what all do I, I need to do may involve multiple people from multiple functions, but that's exactly what projects are. Projects are cross-functional teamwork involving different functions. So goal-based, outcome-based is better. Yeah. Okay. Can we copy dates from Excel? Yes, you can. Yeah. So uh, Ravi, I think we will close here. It's 7.15 now. Thank you for taking the time and thank you, Harshish, for contributing your project as an example out here. Yeah. Thank, thank you, Harshish. That's a very good example and uh, nicely yeah. done. It really helps to have a <laughs> real-world example. Right. Uh, also, the other thing is... Uh, um, I, um, Mukta has put up the sheet, uh, the form for feedback. Please, you do that as well. Okay, over to you, Mukta. Thank you so much, Ravi. Great uh, learning for us today. Thank you, everybody. Bye bye. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you, Ravi. Bye. So, bye. few uh, announcements as usual. Uh, Sixteen more people.